Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hey. Your beard is glorious. Apparently. Look at that. This is the first time we're speaking to the camera since uh, of, vlog, of this vlog. Okay? Yep. So uh, we're on the airplane. And we are. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard Alaska Flight 510. We had a fun morning. Well, you did, didn't you? I don't even know how to start this. Our flight was at 10:30, so we just we just boarded it. Um, and we had to our ride to the airport was arriving at 8 a.m. to pick us up and take us to the airport. So we got up at 7 just to get everything ready, and I did some quick water changes on the fish tanks that we have, which was just like a disaster because like different things stopped working and our ride was outside and I had to like take apart the filter for the fish tank and like repair it and wash everything and it was just frantic and not super fun and then the steady cam gimbal that I use here for filming most of my videos just currently isn't working it looks like it didn't charge overnight so that's fun um, but we're here hopefully we can get that working when we get to Indy and that's all I've got right now. Hey. Are you excited for Gen Con? Sure. Yeah. And almost everything is done. How many events have we done? Oh, good. 19,644 active events, I think, is last check. You look very cute. That's a lot of events, Dave. You did such a good job. Thank you. We did.
excited? Sure. Hang on. These are spicy Cajun craw taters. We see one. Into the oh. toe shape. I thought maybe they'd be a craw tater shape. Are they spicy? Look at me. They're peppery. Are they craw y? Yeah, it's kind of like a, a peppery shrimp chip. We made it. We're in the Westin. We are checked in. Yep. I'm unpacking my bags. Uh, as you can tell, the camera's quite you, shaky. You weren't unpacking your bags. You were watching The Fate of the Furious. I just unpacked it. Uh, anyway, we're watching The Fate of the Furious. We're going to take it easy today. Uh, we ordered pizza to the hotel. And we're watching Fast and Furious Marathon on, well, I don't know, TV. And uh, our flight was good. Um, there's a direct flight from Seattle to Indianapolis. And it took three and a half hours, which is great considering that it takes us about 24 hours to get to Ohio. Then I will edit some of this. We haven't really done anything kind of fun and silly yet for the, for the thing. I don't really have anything exciting for you on this day. Maybe we should play a board game or something. Yeah, you can show them what we, what we brought for board games at least. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do an unboxing of the things I came with and then we'll do an unboxing of the things I took home with you me. also talk about the late events that were just added and stuff like that too? You want to talk about that? You can talk about that. What pizza did you get? Hot chicks. Uh huh. Chicken and barbecue and cheddar and jalapeno. So, Derek, what are we doing? Looking at the games that we brought ourselves. So, Pax Premier, second edition. What's this? Uh, this, this is the game about. Uh, uh, like colonial impact of Afghanistan that you are not gonna like. What kind of core mechanics is it, and why would you play this game? <laughs> uh, I think somebody was like, it's a it's a coin game kind of thing. Uh, What's yeah. a coin like? Is like it a, worker placement or uh, territory control, historical accuracy, complicatedness? Cool. Captain Sonar. Captain, here, yeah, you oh, can hey, it. this one's not Sonar. Okay, Captain Sonar is one of my favorite games, and if you haven't tried it, you totally should. Can you lift it up again? Captain Sonar is for up to two players. I mean, sorry, eight players. Uh, two teams of four. And what I like this about this game, the, what, the way I describe it to people, is if you ever went to a movie, and it was a great movie, and you're leaving the movie theater, and you just can't stop talking about all the different parts that were really fun and really great, that's the kind of feeling I get after playing this game. It is really fun. It is a team-based game. You're both controlling submarines uh, trying to eliminate the it's like advanced battleship but it's like team based and co-op it's really really good you should try it so we uh, usually just travel with check bags not check bags with uh, what's it called carry-on bags but this time we decided to bring um, the big pink bag and check it in and it is just board games um, because there are people here that I don't get to see very often and I want to introduce them to some new board games and then on Mondays uh, Derek and I do like Gooderstein game time that we do every year and we wanted to bring games that we wanted to play this time so we're really excited about some of these titles well that doesn't tell me much secret Hitler <laughs> can you open that Hey, that's a box I recognize. It still doesn't say what the game is on it. Uh, for those of us that may not have played this and are really confused why you have a game that is called Secret Hitler, what uh, what is it? Uh, it's my favorite like social deduction game uh, where you're trying to figure out who Hitler is and stop him from becoming chancellor. Like, is there pieces on a board and you're trying to figure out who no, on the board is Hitler? A, no, it's a social deduction game. So people get different roles and you're trying to figure out by passing liberal or fascist policies, you're trying to identify who is a liberal versus who is a fascist. So this is kind of like from. Werewolf? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you really like it? Mm -hmm. Is that your jam? Yep, it's, it's my favorite social deduction game. Mountains of Madness. And uh, you are, it's a cooperative game where you are a bunch of play, uh, characters who are climbing this mountain of madness uh, and get back off the mountain essentially. It is really fun. I kind of call it a, um, I call it a party game for people who game. So the game is, is a little more complicated than like Cards Against Humanity or like 
like a straight up party game but there's elements in it that are really fun and silly that a party game has so for example every round you're trying to accomplish certain things and tasks in this game um but if you don't accomplish them the right way you get a madness um that have real life effects i guess so for example i got one that was every time I'm not allowed to talk unless somebody says my full name, but I can't tell people that that's the madness I have. They just kind of have to figure it out. Or every time somebody says the word the, I have to jump uh, under the table uh, and act like a chicken or something like that. So uh, it's kind of silly. It's very hard to beat, but it's kind of like a party game for gamers. And if you're into co-op games that are kind of silly, but also meaty, this might be a really good idea to try out. This is World Championship Russian Roulette. Okay. Uh, it's just a very fun, ridiculous party game. We are trying to win the World Championship of Russian Roulette. It's very much push your luck with a little bit of cheating. Uh, so, this is Magic Maze. I brought this game because it is great for, I think, up to eight players. And it's co-op. Derek is checking. It also won Game of the Year 2017 uh, from Spiel des Jahres. Uh, I, I like it. It's a co-op game. It's real time. You're essentially trying to navigate a, a shopping mall and um, escape without any talking and you still have to work together. I think it's a lot of fun. I think this might be one of the games that I bring along to the uh, Nelly game time events that I have, the meet and greets that I have with some people. I think that would be a fun one to try out. Problem is you are not supposed to talk to each other when you're playing it, but it also goes, I think uh, it takes 15 minutes to play a game, so I think that could be a fun one. It's Root. It is a wildly asymmetrical territory control game. Victory point. What do you mean by, so you made this game sound so boring just by the way you said those things. It just means that every faction plays completely differently. Uh, and the more exciting way to say it is, it's the Vietnam War, but adorable woodland creatures. So, uh, in layman's terms, yeah. you get to either be a raccoon, bird, a bird, a fox, uh, the cats, or uh, the raccoon samurai wandering warrior. And each of these factions essentially has um, an entirely different way to play this game. And it's really interesting because in most games, everybody's doing the same thing and trying to do it better than anybody else. But in an asymmetric game, this person might be trying to gain as much territory as possible, whereas this person's trying to get as much money as possible. Well, not not even that, but like the way in which they do things is different. Yeah. This is basically four games happening at the same time. Yeah, and it's, it's really well balanced. We like it a whole lot. I like the raccoon, I think, mm -hmm. the vagabond. Yep. Yeah, that's the character I like to play because everybody has to be nice to him. What other asymmetric games do you like, Derek? Mm, Netrunner. Vast. Vast is by the same people, right? It is XCOM. XCOM is one of my favorite co-op games. And I like it a lot because I painted the minis in it to be um, Mass Effect style. So they all have the white and red stripe. And uh, it is a cooperative game based on the video game. And essentially there's aliens attacking and you're trying to defeat the invading force of the aliens and everybody's got to work together but it's in real time so a lot of things are happening all at the same time and then after that there's a resolution phase it is a lot of pressure and it's quick and it's fast and it's not an easy game it's hard and um, so I like this game a lot if you like more difficult co-op games where you've got to make decisions on the fly really like know how your team is gonna work together and how other people can support you and how you can support them. I really like this game a lot. You should try it. This was a Kickstarter game uh, that uh, had a couple different versions and this is the new version of it. Uh, and I want to see how it plays. It's kind of like um, like a little bit of a plotting game. The theme is a little bit Dune and you're kind of laying out cards trying to take over planets. What's a plotting game? A plotting. As in yeah, like what's trying a plot? To lay, a, lay a plot out like you're... Like a programming game? Like no, uh, Rogue no, Rally? Like, no, like you just have a plan. Like you're trying to... You're laying out cards kind of in secret trying to take over a planet. Okay. You, you lay out your plan basically and then everybody reveals and you see who got it. Uh, I brought Shinobi Clans. You were? 
Uh, basically, I just brought a bunch of games that I don't have a chance to play a lot. Thinking of it, I think Shinobi Clans is actually kind of like Imperius, where you're playing cards face down to try to accomplish something. Uh, but it's hard to predict what the other players are trying to do. So you end up revealing them all at the same time to see if you... Does that make it very random? It can be, I suppose. You gotta wonder how much control you have. You trying to predict what other people are doing? Do you have hints? You Information? Can. Okay. There's, you know, there's limited amounts of uh, stuff out there. I have Shipwreck Arcana. If you followed last year's vlogs, you probably saw this game a few times. This is the game that I played with um, people at uh, Nelly's Nerdy Adventure Meetup before. And I just love this game. This is the game I'm bringing it again this year. And uh, it is a beautiful art. It's all kind of a tarot style. And um, it's essentially like a logic, cooperative logic puzzle style game. You're trying to predict some things that people have in their hands based on clues that are out on the table. It's really fun. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes or so to play. It's cooperative up to four players, I think. Five players. Let's try it. If you meet me at Nelly's Nerdy Adventures Meetup, I'll play with you. Or if you find me, I'll play with you anyway because I like it. Terry's a little grumpy because uh, most of the games... We are, are, damaged. are damaged like like this so I guess I don't recommend checking a bag of board games this is a tiny little game uh, that is uh, like the the retail version of my favorite three player deduction game it's yeah, a very limited number of cards um, and you are trying to one player knows what the scoring card is and all the other players are trying to deduce what it is. Who designed it? Daniel Salas. What other games has he made? Mm, he's done a lot of different games. A lot of uh, like non-violent uh, collection, set collection games. He did Kodama. Um, Koi Pond. Stuff like that. Did he do Junk Orbit? Was that him? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Derek. Shadow Throne which is another game about kind of predicting what other people are playing. Um, and it's one of those games that I always want to try to play, but we never really do. So uh, I brought a lot of games that I want to decide whether I ultimately like them or not. Do you know anything about how to play it? Yeah, like you're playing cards from your hand to try to influence a court. Um, and you are more successful if you play cards that other people do not. Uh, I brought Lifeboat, I think. Well, Derek brought Lifeboat. Life broke. But I had initially bought this game because I, I like the premise of it. Essentially, you and everybody else is stranded out at sea on this boat. And it's a card game and you have to play a variety of cards and take different actions. But you're trying to collect water and items and all sorts of things. And essentially, at some point, there's not enough food or something like that on the boat. And some people have bullets and guns and... You might have to sacrifice somebody else, so you're all kind of working together until you're not. Um, and the other interesting thing is that everybody on the boat also has a person they're trying to protect and a per person that is their enemy. And that can be very interesting. For example, if Derek was my enemy, but I was the person he was trying to protect, that's kind of a weird relationship. Um, I've only played it once, and it didn't play as smoothly as I wanted it to, but I guess we'll give it another try, and we'll see how we like it at Gooder Sign Game Time. Sail to India. Uh, it's basically the portable Euro game that I enjoy bringing when we travel. I mean, it's basically it's a Euro game, but like kind of uh, distilled down to a track of cards for the most part, some cards and cubes. There's them fighting words. Uh, it is a memory game of uh, Wild West insults, um, and you have to basically just remember a long string of insults. Uh, and it helps the more thick of an accent you can put on. Give me an insult. Uh, you milk drinking son of a cattle rustling, dung smelling, hay baling, yellow bellied snake oil salesman. Um, and it's an it's a hidden information, shared information uh, betting game with some really neat mechanics. I like it a lot. I heard a lot of good stuff about it for a couple of years, and then we demoed it at Origins. I think it was on the vlog, uh, and we picked it up. This is the last game that I brought, and it is Spirit Island. Uh, it is one of my favorite games. It is definitely like a hard co-op game. Like if you're looking for a, a difficult, like a really big challenge, Spirit Island is the way to go. You, you are... Sorry, Dar I'm in the middle of a thing. Um, 
<laughs> so there's like uh, conquistadors or something like that trying to invade this island and you and everybody else at the table is cooperating and you're the spirits um, of that island trying to protect it from civilization coming and ruining everything. And it is a very difficult game about like managing actions. A lot of times you're taking actions that are like two or three steps in advance or like in the future. Uh, so it takes some time before the things you're planning actually happen. Um, it's a thematic game, but the gameplay kind of takes you out of the theme. There's a lot of like micromanaging and metagaming so that you maximize every turn, which sounds really dull, but I love it. And I painted all of the <laughs> figures and I spent a lot of time on it and I love it. So you should try it if you like hardcore co-op games. Hocus. Which is poker, but for people who like uh, magic, like the, the, the gathering. gathering. Yep. Really? Yeah. It's ba it's it's basically poker. You're playing poker, but everybody uh, is a mage and can cast different kinds of spells to manipulate how poker works. Okay. Um, uh, that's another one of the games that I'm bringing because I want to like and play it more than I do. Um, so I want to try to get some more time in with it. Then there's Heat, which is a very neat game about like being a criminal and trying to get as much money as you can but trying to not get too much attention from the police at the same time do you want to talk about any of the last minute like events that you added to the system or can you not kind of remember what they were uh i mean there were a handful of different things um there was a bunch of Delta Green, which is an RPG I really like. And it was nice to because they sold out really fast. And then it was nice to see the company submit a bunch more events at the last minute because some companies just kind of give up. Um, but it was gratifying to see them do that. So I put in some work and found them some space. Uh, there's a couple instances of Scythe. Um, there's uh, our friends at Lay Waste Games. Um, uh, I guess run a consulting company. Uh, anyway, he got some space uh, for events, and he's running Pax Premier, Shasen, some other cool stuff. Uh, what if people are going to try and find anything like that? Do they just look up Lay Waste Games? Mm, I think it's under other stuff uh, in the system right now. This Is that the game working? Okay, come. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to mention these things because they got added last minute, so they probably still have tickets, and people may not know that there's, you know, tickets for things. Hey, Derek. Yeah. What the TV show is that? Nosferatu. What is it about? Uh, as far as I can tell, it's about a vampire classic car that kidnaps children, turns them into cannibals, and sends them to evil Disneyland. Hi, Marianne. Hey, how's it She going? delivered some uh, more games to me. And, and also, uh, she got me this thing. So if you spot me wearing that, uh, say hi. Uh, but we're not sure it'll, it'll fit, so. Um, it'll, it might fit Derek. You know, if Derek is wearing it, you should say hi to him. Person. Yeah, okay. you should say hi to Derek if he ends up wearing this. Look at this dress. Oh, yeah. I think it's cute. I think it's really and cute. If it's a little short. You can like wear leggings with it. If you yeah, want. I have those little shorts too that go yeah. under it. Oh yeah, you're fine. And it's like super stretchy, so it's got little kitties all over it. I hope it oh. fits. I I'm gonna know. try to wear that tomorrow. These things are from a store called what was that? Tomboy Tots. And look, it's very dark, but you can see it's a unicorn butt and a kitty cat mermaid. He's a mercat. Mercat and they're pens. <laughs> they're so cool. Yeah, you should support this vendor. I mean, I don't think they'll be here. Not here. But they have but a website. They're super cool, and you can order stuff off their Facebook or their website. Super cool. And, and like a lot of D20 <sighs> stuff, too. I have a oh, D20 clip. And a that's cute and for your hair. Yeah. It's like multicolored. It's, oh, and my gosh, they make these cute little, um, you know, those things that have little snaps and they lay completely flat, but you can snap them up into a little dice bowl. Mm -hmm. So they make those too. So I bought three of them and one of them is awesome. It glows in the dark and it's the glowiest in the darkiest thing you've ever seen. What like, is it? Is it made of cloth or leather or? <sighs> so it kind of feels like leather or like just like a heavy plastic uh -huh. and it looks yellow and you're like, oh, this kind of, and it's got like a D20 um embroidered on it and you're like this is nice but then it's like everyone come into the bathroom and close the door and it's like, <laughs> and it's like did you bring it oh yeah okay cool because if there's a power to, outage we're gonna have we'll to run in, we're so. gonna have to run into the bathroom with you i know <laughs> no, no it'll happen later i okay. guarantee everyone in the bathroom so hot box always has a gen con 
a pizza, like Gen Con partners with them and they make a Gen Con pizza and the only one I remember, well actually I remember two, but one of them had the 50th anniversary one I think had glitter all over it. Gold, yes it did. Edible glitter and it was a spicy one and then the you other one is edible and it was not digestible. <laughs> oh no. So you're going to see it later. Yeah, it's fun that just keeps coming. Um, it makes everything more festive. And then the other one was a mac and cheese pizza. Yeah, that's all right. I, that sounds amazing. Yeah. What is this year's pizza? Okay, I don't remember what it's called, but I was just on Facebook and the guy responded. So it's got, it's, it's a pizza, like a normal human pizza, but it's got these tiny little- Human pizza? The special ingredient is human? It's silent green pizza. No, it's got these little tiny tater tots on it. Okay. Oh, so and little pieces of bacon, which I support. Um, I wanna say something else, maybe onions. And then it has like a drizzle of ranch sauce on the top so it's, of it. So it's like loaded tater tot pizza. Yeah, kinda. I think so. I'm wow. Like, I'm willing to try it. Like I didn't try the glitter one because uh, I think well, it didn't have a lot of hot sauce on it. So it was really spicy and I'm not really into that. Yeah, but that's why I didn't try it. sounds good. And I'm a big fan of tots. Because I like to get the loaded tots, tots from Cluster tots, Trucks. Tots. Tots. Okay. So it, it might be fun. I'll give it a try at least. Okay. And I don't know when that launches. It wasn't active today yet i figure probably on wednesday and thinking about taking myself on a date tomorrow to that tiki bar and i wanted to ask you if you would recommend it to me and my viewers it's called the inferno room by the way would i, would I like it because yeah so the atmosphere is very cool it was very much like going into a disney restaurant right so they've really gone all out decorating there's like these uh, really cool. There's these flowers everywhere. There's a lot of bamboo. There's a big giant like Polynesian inspired mask up here and there's skulls everywhere because I guess it's also like a pirate thing going on. So it really was cool. It was really like we're kind of in Disney World and periodically, I don't want to spoil it, but it goes like boom, boom, boom and there's like a thunder noise. And cool. Food and drink wise, um, I it was good. It wasn't as good as I hoped it would be. First off, they have a very limited menu. It was very heavy on the pork. Mm -hmm. If you went, you could have, they have like these peanuts that they fry and they, they give you like roughly 500 chilies that you can break up and make them even spicier. <laughs> but like we just pulled them out and put them in. Sure. Uh, they were good. I liked fried peanuts. They had um, malanga fritters, which is some kind of root that looks like a yucca, but I've never had it before. But the you mentioned very two good. vegetables, I don't know. Right, oh, you don't know yucca? No, oh, it's kind of like um. Is it like a parsnip or like a carrot? It's or? like a turnip. Like a, it's like a pissed off potato. Okay, so it's, I mean it's like it's starchy like a potato, but it's starchier and even a little stringier like the. Uh. Stringy? Okay. Anyway, would you well, recommend you it? The fritter, I would. I thought okay. the fritter was very good, and I and I'm thinking of you because I know you try to eat vegan or vegetarian yeah, yeah, yeah. when you can. However, and the other thing that me and David had, which we liked a lot, was uh, pineapple fried rice, and it had little bits of spam in it. Ooh, but that sounds pretty good. It was quite good. I like anything with pineapple in it. Yeah, you would Especially like it. Especially pizza. pizza, spam, or pizza. There wasn't a lot. Um, the thing is, we also ordered this pork dish that never came. And oh, really... is the service generally pretty good, or just like okay? It was it was okay. A lot of people ordered some drink that I don't know what it was, but when you ordered it, it was like woo, and then the waitress brings it out and she goes, choo, 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 and then it flames up a lot. Huh. And and but it's still on fire. Was when it she good? It to you. And like they both had a little orchid on top, so like the presentation, the venue is just all awesome. If any of my viewers like beer uh -huh. and they're an indie yeah. and they would like to check out a couple of places with great beer, what are your like? I don't know how many top you have, but top sure, three I maybe think, or top yeah, five? Yeah, three. Mountain Square Brewing. Um, as a bonus, the Cat Cafe is right across the street. Hey. They have an excellent chai latte. But so Fountain Square Brewing is across from that. They're great. They're local. They just bought New Day Meadery, so they have all those meads over there too if you want to see them. And they made a special beer for Gen Con. It's called a D20 Peach. Uh, something it's called d20 something and it's a peach hefeweizen it's really really good i had is it peachy those. it is peachy but not overly so like it's not cloyingly sweet it's not super sweet it's really nice and light and refreshing perfect summer beer That's why where, should uh, people try it like where should they go it's a local place it's a neighborhood place it's got local beer 
they care about their beer, I think. So I, I really liked it. Um, the Hefeweizen's good, the, the peach Hefeweizen's great. They have a good variety. You know, a lot of, sometimes you go to places and they're all IPAs, which I hate. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they had a great variety, very friendly, and they have a lot of pinball machines, which I like. Was there food too? They only have pretzels. Oh, they, had chips. they had chips and popcorn. Sure. So no. Snacks. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say number two. This is close because we could go a bunch of different ways with this. You could have an honorable mention if you no, feel. No, this is fine. If number, you're number two for this year of the ones I've gone to uh, is going to be chili water. That's also in. Uh, it's in the Fountain Square area. That is actually walkable. That's um, from Fountain Square or from here. From here, my husband walked over there today. It's a little over a mile. I think it's like a mile and a quarter. I wouldn't walk it in the heat, but he did. He was fine. Uh, they have a really nice grapefruit Rattler, um, so that's very light. It's almost like a grapefruit soda. It's only a three percent alcohol, which is Does very. Because very nice. people are a little contentious about grapefruit. Is it like very grapefruit, or no, is it more citrusy? It's like citrusy, like drinking a citrus soda. Mm -hmm. Like if you know the squirt, the soda squirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's kind of like that. And the alcohol so low. You, you know, it's fine. You could drink like five of them. That was great. They had a really good variety. The nice thing about them is they have a really good food selection. They have good hamburgers. I had a quesadilla. They have hummus. They have like a hummus trio that you might like. Um, they have a big variety. They had pretzels, which I like pretzels and beer cheese. Uh, so that was good. Uh, but my number one brewery for this year, and a lot of people don't know about it. So this is like an awesome scoop. And insider, I want people to go out insider there. Insider information. <laughs> Garfield Brewery over by Garfield Park. That is not walkable either. That's several miles away. You're going to have to get a lift. And it's in an old gas station. Well, that's kind of cool. I know. And they just had their first year anniversary party. Oh, so it's new. Yesterday. Yes, yes, yes. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to go over there and try it. So Garfield was great. Um, it is absolutely like the quintessential neighborhood bar because it's sort of in a neighborhood. It's two blocks from the park. They're all about, you know, partnering with local neighborhood charities or parties or, you know, whatever. Um, and they're very customer oriented. They're very friendly. Um, and there are no frills, but they do have a hot dog. They had hot pretzels and they have chips, but everything is local. Like even the mustard that I got with my pretzel is, is local by this guy. It's amazing. It's batch two mustard. I didn't think I'd be like, Ooh, this mustard is amazing. It was amazing. So the beer, turning to the beer, they had a good variety. They weren't all IPAs. They were all different. But the two beers that we went for, the reason we were going out there was they had two beers that looked interesting to us, a strawberry ale and a watermelon wheat. And they were both fantastic. They were both really good. Like I, I ended up getting a full of each one because I just couldn't decide. What's a full? Like a, a pint, full pint? A pint. I'm sorry. Instead of like a taster. Or, oh, so you had a taster first and then? I had a little taster of both and I'm like, I don't know. Screw it. We're getting both of them. They were wonderful, and we talked to the guy at length that was working there, the the bar, the manager. Uh, he's a really nice guy. Uh, he was explaining to us about how they try to use local stuff, like the hops they use in the IPA are from a local farm. It's a farm that's a couple miles away. It's only a half acre, but that's Aww. where they make. I know, and that's where they have the hops. And this is the cool thing they're doing right now is they're they're working on making a community ale where they've given seeds to a bunch of people in the community to That's grow the so hops. That's so cute. And then they're going to bring the hops back and, and make cute. a community beer, which is awesome. So they do great things like that. But he was talking to us about um, a lot of the minutia of, of how beer distribution and things work. So like, for instance, one of the things that they have chosen not to do, they don't distribute beer because it's expensive and the margin on that is very small. You got to do it big if you're going to do it. You do. And then the other thing is that when you do it like that, <clears throat> you, you you really have to cut the price of how much it costs you to make the beer. So he's like, you know, we put tons and tons of strawberries in this. We put tons and tons yeah. of watermelon. If no we were flavoring. distributing it, we could not charge enough. And what, who we would sell it to could not charge enough for us to make any money off of it. Mm -hmm. So we don't distribute. We just have it here. And you can come and get it. We can use the best quality ingredients. Yeah, he's not cutting corners so that he could do yes, it. Yes, yeah. And it, and at, like honestly, I, even I had one of their IPAs, which I hate. But And we were, we were talking to the guy about all the different hops we like. And he's like, well, try this IPA. It's New Zealand hops. It's not the Cascade hops that I don't like. And it was actually really good. And I could totally have 
a whole IPA like that. Which that I surprises normally. me because I know you know how I, am I know that. how much you dislike yeah, IPAs. Yeah. yeah, and there was like an and there were a lot of different styles. There was an American Ale. There were two IPAs, a um, couple different ones, but the. I really went for those fruit beers. They were outstanding, and I absolutely am going to go back to that place. It was so cute. They were so friendly. It was so local and neighborhoody. Thank you. Sure, absolutely. Talks by Marion. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Gen Con video or stream without talking about Gen Con merchandise. Vogue. Do you see what it says? Yep. It's got pockets. This is the ladies' cut. It's got pockets, and it gathers at the bottom, and it kind of is like high waisted. Like it's got a drawstring. It's super comfortable. See it? Yep. It's got this like waxed cotton or something uh, like that. Canvas. The waxed canvas, so it's not leather. Um, it's nice. Got the logo on it. It's got a little clasp, and it's square. It's, really, like it's pretty comfortable. Candier. And this is the travel backpack I used today, and uh, it's just like a school backpack kind of, but it's like the extra large size. So you can fit a couple of board games in here and it's got like a big middle portion and then the front portion and I traveled with this one today. It's pretty comfortable on your shoulders. It's got good straps. So I like the whole bunch. So Derek's got a bunch of meetings tomorrow. He starts work at Gen Con tomorrow. I mean, he started work at Gen Con last year. Anyway, he, he doesn't get a, a, a break or a weekend. So we're here now. Um, he's going to do a little bit of work on his laptop now, I think. And then tomorrow he's got meetings with the venues, so right, you've got the JW and the Marriott. Eventually you'll have the Western and Union Station and the Crown and the ICC walkthrough setting up um, GMHQ. All of that stuff is starting to roll in tomorrow. Uh, so I will be flying solo most of the, the day tomorrow, maybe the day after. Uh, maybe if David's free, we can hang out, but we are going to go see a baseball game tomorrow at around 7. And then, like Marion said, maybe I will go to the Cat Cafe and try that peach beer she was talking about. Um, maybe I'll get my nails done at that really awful place in the mall <laughs> across the street. Uh, in the morning, I'll probably go get coffee from Bee's Coffee because I really like it. And... I really want to try that tiki bar, but I don't really want to go to myself. It sounded a little weird, but and then I'm going to edit this video, which hopefully is interesting. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.